Hi, so today we're going to talk about architectural improvements and some refactoring. And I want to start from coupling and cohesion. I won't explain the deep concept of that, just read about this. But shortly, in large systems, it's very important to keep your big modules as less connected as possible. So coupling means cross connections between your big modules and cohesion means uh, connections inside your modules. Keeping low coupling and high cohesion in front-end projects is a very difficult task and some design methodologies like feature slice design trying to solve this problem. But today we are not going that deep. Maybe I will record additional series about feature sliced and how to create app using this methodology. But today we'll try to improve our architecture without rebuilding the whole code base. And as a first step, we should install dependency cruiser package to our project to visualize how our components are interconnected to understand the flaws of our architecture. Um, actually, I recorded already separate video about dependency cruiser, so I will just import the config file. So let's start. So what I already did, I actually installed the dep cruise locally. So you see here in dev dependency uh, dependency cruiser. Um, so also, I added this uh, script to package.json scripts to generate actually our visual graph of dependency uh, of dependencies. And also, I copied the configuration file with the slight changes. For example, I excluded some folders and um, I changed a bit uh, how we present a collapse pattern here. So let's see actually how it works. So we see here our dependency graph. We can check what problems we have here. For example, in UIKit, we have uh, many imports uh, from different files. Uh, our components are actually highly uh, coupled and uh, we'll try to use a uh, um, technique called uh, public API to change this. So what we will do, actually, we'll create public API for each of our separate module, like UI kit, uh, user, and uh, probably each of uh, features. So maybe we will create API for user widget, select category, create category, and etc. So let's start. So first, uh, what we should do, actually, let me check what, what I added here. So this is config file for Deb Cruise. This is our files in Git currently changed. I just want to check them. And uh, I use CJS, the uh, CJS file extension to avoid some ESLint problems. So it's, uh, that means common JS. Here we see that everything is okay. Okay, so we can start actually making our refactoring. And first, what we want to do is uh, create index test file and export everything from our UI kit. So I will copy this. So we export everything. And now what we should actually fix every import, which uh, leads to all of these modules. So we, we should check where exactly we, we can check it on our uh, graph. So we can see, for example, select using in select category and logo is in index A. TSX, so let's do it one by one. So in select, in select category, we can import this select, uh, not from UI kit select, but from UI kit. So now we import everything like this, SRC UI kit. For example, next thing we want to change, it's uh, in index TSX. So here, uh, we also have a problem here. So here we want to keep logo imported like this from UI key directly. Next thing we want to check it's a user popover. So let's see what we have here. SRC UI kit. And also use create category. 
use create category src utils api okay not not this but create category pop-up so here we use like this okay let's regenerate again uh, our graph just to check whether everything is okay so what we have now uh, we see that it's already much better um, and uh, I think actually I fixed everything for UI kit yeah it seems like that so now uh, every module imports our index test file that means that all the um, implementation of UIKit is inside UIKit and not connected to other modules. It's uh, great for architecture. So let's uh, see what we can do for our features. Because here we have also uh, highly, coupling, highly coupled modules and we also want to create public APIs for them. So for example, for a user I would create again index.ts so I would export lib and also um, that that's a good question do we want to have a public API for all user features we can do it for now because uh, it's uh, easier to maintain maybe in future when we will have a much bigger code base we'll think about it again but now we, we can use public api for the whole user folder for example also we can have a public api for all category folder Okay, now we want to connect everything directly from features. So we don't want to import everything from files deeply nested, um, but just from features category and here from features user, something like this. Let's regenerate our uh, dependency graph again and see what we have here. So now category uh, is refactored, but one second, I need to check. Yeah, still user is not refactored because uh, import from uh, create category uh, is incorrect. We need to fix that. So create, oh, so create category. So here, uh, not here, sorry, we're here. Okay, let's check it again. Now um, everything in category is uh, imported from index, it's okay. From uh, user also is used only using index index.ts, it's also good. So seems like we managed to keep our modules uh, less coupled and uh, that was actually our task for this video and uh, in addition in this video I wanted I want to add uh, some uh, phones and uh, additional developer experience features like com commit lint because we want to keep in our commits good styling for messages using convention so I highly recommend to check what is commit lint and uh, what is actually recommended config for commit lint. Okay, let's proceed first with the fonts because it's uh, easier. I just show you how we can do this in this type of application, in Next.js application. So we add document with underscore and here basically are our configuration for default things like favicon and uh, our fonts. For example, I added here Google Fonts and I added JetBrains Mono to use it for uh, all our um, fonts in future. So this is the default pattern and you can actually copy it. All of these are scaffolded, so you don't need to think about it. 
And the second thing we should do, we should configure our Tailwind with new uh, with new phones. So to do so, we open Tailwind config and we added to uh, we added this block with font families. We know that for font family, for Sans we will use JetBrains Mono, and for Mono we also use JetBrains Mono. And actually, that's it. So this is all the configuration for fonts. So the last thing would be Comet, Lind, and Husky to improve our developer experience. So what I would do, actually, I would install, I would show you one second, sorry. So in uh, official documentation of Comet, Lind, we have uh, this, so we should install Comet Lint and config conventional, con sorry, conventional. Uh, this is about git conventional commits, so I highly recommend to, uh, highly recommend you to check it and how to use it. So I do npm install. Also, I installed Husky because uh, we want to run our commit Lint every time we do commit, and Husky helps us with that. So I do npm install husky. And uh, that's it. We just need to configure actually our husky to create some configuration. Oops, we, we do something wrong. Yeah, we forgot about activation and pix husky install. And now we add a hook for our commit lint. So we need to actually configure our commit lint config.js because if we do not do so we won't be able to commit anything so let's see we have here our uh, configuration and if you see something like this you can change the file name uh, to cgs sorry file extension to cgs to avoid the cs lint problems so we have here many files let's just for just for test i try to commit something and we see that comment failed and we see here message from our commit lint it's uh, very helpful for for developers because we keep messages in our git uh, consistent and uh, we use it uh, with the convention so yeah this is about it let's just check whether all of this works so seems like everything is working we have new font uh, it's JetBrains Mono yeah JetBrains Mono everything is okay so this is actually it about this video. In the next one, we will start building new features. So yeah, thank you.